I've been wanting to make this video for a while now, and like many of you, I saw the announcement of iPadOS 16 and the release of the developer betas soon after, but I didn't want to try something that early, especially when those betas are often not quite ready. So now the public beta is out, which we can all try, I wanted to share with you my five favorite features that I think most of us will really enjoy. Oh, and remember, a public beta is still a beta, so don't sign up for this unless you're okay with the risks that it entails. Anyway, let's dive right in. Let's talk about the big one first, Stage Manager. Stage Manager is a complete redesign and rethink of how multitasking works on the iPad, and it's probably the biggest update here with iPadOS 16, at least for iPads with the M1 chip. Stage Manager lets you have floating resizable windows in a very similar vein to macOS or Windows. You can pick up to four apps to have running side by side at once, and you can also build spaces of apps off to the left of the screen too. It's not totally flexible like the computers we're used to, the apps will still snap into place over each other, but the options you have are pretty good. And to be honest, running four apps on an iPad screen anyway feels a little overkill. However, Stage Manager really opens up when you connect it to an external monitor. This turns the iPad into a full screen external monitor experience that a huge amount of us have been wanting for a long time, and it's so nice to see it and to make use of it. I love how this looks. I never really knew exactly how Apple were going to make iPads work on external monitors and this iteration of it feels really great and it looks good for the iPad too. Having multiple apps open on a larger screen feels great and it's so nice to use some of the bigger creative apps on the big screen too. Not to mention browsing the internet while having other smaller apps open like Twitter or Spotify is a really pleasant experience. You can make separate spaces within Stage Manager too so you can have different sets of apps stuck together and then switch between them easily. I like the idea of using this to create separate spaces tailored to different things like researching, social feeds and creative apps. Right now though this still isn't a totally finished finished experience. There's little glitches within apps and sometimes the iPad will just kind of crash. So don't upgrade to this beta without understanding, well, it's still a beta. And look, there's a lot to unpack here with Stage Manager and it probably deserves its own video. But to address the main concern of it being an M1 only feature, all I'll say is go and check out Rene Ritchie's video on why that is. He wraps it all up in a neat little bow. But for my take on it, I think it's a shame that it's limited, but I do understand why. However, I do wish there was a version of it so that all iPad users could experience at least some form of external monitor support, even if it was just like one app at a time or something. For now though, this is a fantastic upgrade for iPad power users, and I think you're really going to enjoy it when it comes out. Next up is being able to adjust the display resolution to fit more things on the iPad. And I was really surprised with this one. I didn't realize how much space the iPad was kind of like wasting. Toggling this on gives each app a load more room to breathe and you can fit loads more on your screen. While this seems like a super simple upgrade and in a way it is, if you spend a lot of time in list or scrolling based apps like Twitter, notes or messages, then you just get so much more out of the available screen real estate on the iPad. Technically, this does reduce the sharpness of the display and if you pixel peep with text you can definitely see the effect but having more space for me is certainly worth that small trade-off. Okay, before we move on to the next feature, I just wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning or is looking to develop a specific skill set. As a former teacher, I've always been a fan of trying to learn something new or to keep pushing myself in my subject area. And with Skillshare, you can make 2022 a year of learning growth and connection through creativity. I've actually used Skillshare in the past to learn how to sketch better on my iPad, but this time around, I've been checking out MKBHD's video on how he runs his YouTube channel. And despite running this one myself, there's always something new to learn, especially from one of the very best in the tech space. Watching through these has given me an incredible insight to how his team and video process works. And even though we're miles apart, there's common takeaways that make total sense for what I do. So if you do want to invest in yourself and your own personal growth, the first 1000 of my viewers to sign up through the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity. This next update was another one that had me really excited and it's being able to lift a subject from the background with just a tap. 
We often hear a lot about on-device AI and the power of it, but it's always quite rare to see it in action. But this new feature is a direct example of it. And as someone who's done a lot of Photoshop work in the past, I would have killed for this feature a few years ago. To show you an example, if you head into the Photos app and pick a photo with a clear subject, you can tap and hold your finger on it and it will remove it from the background, which you can then take directly to another place or another app. It's never a completely perfect cutout, but it does a surprisingly good job. And for mocking things up or for making thumbnails in YouTube, if that's your bag, this is going to be such a nice time saver. It's also going to be great for making stickers on iPhone too. I also wanted to shout out live text for video while talking about the AI improvements. Last year, I was super impressed with how Apple used AI for you to be able to copy text from a photo and then paste it into a Word document or anything else. In fact, I actually use that all the time to copy hashtags from Instagram to put within my own posts. However, this is now going a step further by letting you do live text within video. Effectively, this is exactly the same trick, but you can do it within videos now, which is awesome. You just pause the video and then hold your finger on the on-screen text to bring up the menu to either copy, look up, or to make quick actions from it. This might be great if you're watching a filmed lesson and want to copy and paste what's on the board, or if you want to quickly grab the name of a book or something within a film. Super cool update here, and I'm a really big fan of it. Moving on now to the Files app, and honestly, the Files app in iPadOS was never great, so I'm super happy to tell you that Apple has sorted it out massively with iPadOS 16. There's so many updates in here, so I'm going to just pick a few which I think are standouts. First up, there's now a right-click option or a long finger hold so you can get access to lots of classic file options. There's now a progress bar if you're moving around large files, and it's also finally got a stop button too. There's now the ability to go into list view. There's also now a share button so you can quickly share files with others and you can now also rename files and change their extensions as well. So there's a lot of updates here and I know it seems silly to get excited over a files app but these are some great updates and I'm glad they're finally here. I'm also going to throw in customizing toolbars into this feature because I think it's a cool little tweak. This pretty much does what it says on the tin. You can now customize toolbars within certain apps so they're more tailored to you. It's a small but nice little update. Okay, so that wraps up five of what I think are the cooler updates coming for iPad this autumn. There is, of course, a bunch of other awesome features coming that I didn't touch on here, like collaboration, mail improvements, the new lock screen, driver support, and the all new weather app. But I know that those features, while cool in their own right, won't have a huge impact on how I use the iPad. Anyway, let me know what you're most excited to check out in this update, or if you've been using the public beta. I'm always interested to hear your thoughts on on all of this. As always, pop a like on the way out, that'd be massive, and I will see you all in the next one.